Hi, and welcome to Witchanika. In today's video, we'll be learning about how you can create readme files for your Git repositories using Markdown. Let's get started. So, what are readme files? Readme files are files that kind of describe what your repository is about. They're written used using a lightweight markup language called as Markdown, which we'll be talking about today. So the profile readme that you're looking at today on GitHub here is written in Markdown. You can see I have links in them, emojis, bold text, and a lot of other things that we can add within a readme file. A readme file is usually used to describe what your repository is about. So for example, if I navigate over to my Node.js API tutorial, you can see that the readme file is the first thing that GitHub will show to you when you go to that repository, and it describes what the repository is about, how you can set up the project, and other details. If you're looking for more content like this, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon below to get notified of more videos that I release. As always, today's cheat sheet for Markdown will be available in the description below, along with links to my other tutorials about Git and how you can use it in software development. So let's dive right into it. I already have Visual Studio Code open, and I've created a sample Git repository and connected it with my remote, which is on GitHub. So the first step for us will be to go ahead and create a readme file. So let's go ahead and do touch readme.md to create that file. We now have the readme.md file. Now, Visual Studio Code provides a neat plugin that allows me to preview the Markdown file on the right-hand side while I'm typing into it. This will be helpful to kind of visualize your Markdown before you push the, your a repository up to GitHub. So let's get started with some of the basic formatting that Markdown provides to us. The first syntax that Markdown provides to us are headings. So we can go ahead and add a headings using the hash symbol. We'll go ahead and say heading one. And you can similarly use other sizes as well. So two hashes will be heading two, and then three will be heading three. So you can use this to kind of separate sections within your readme file. The next one that we have is just basic text. So this is text within the readme file. The beauty of this is you can also format this text as well. So I wanted the word readme to be in bold. I can go ahead and add two asterisks on either side of the world. And that'll make that word into bold. You can also have text in italics. So this is italics. And you can go ahead and do this by adding one asterisk on each side of that text. You can also do both together by just going ahead and adding two asterisks to the existing one. So three in total will be added. This is bold and italic. So you can see the text now is both bold and italic. The next syntax that's provided within Markdown is quotes. So if you wanted to quote text separately within your um, readme file, you can simply use the greater than operator and then use that as a quote. So you can go ahead and say, this is a quote within the readme file. So you can see it comes up as a quote within the file rather than as regular text. So if you want to call out something, that would be a nice way to do that. You can similarly call out code as well. So you can use code blocks in two ways. One is within a sentence, and the second option would be separately as individual blocks. So the first one within a sentence would be, you can create a Git repository using, and then you would use the backticks, three of them, git init, which is the command that we want to showcase there, and then three more to close that off. And you can see that is highlighted as code within your readme file. The next way would be to create a separate code block itself. So you can go ahead and again use backticks. You can say creating a directory, right? So make their new directory and then cd new directory to go into that and then close that using backticks. Now you can also use code or syntax highlighting as well within this. So you can go ahead and say three backticks again, JavaScript, 
because that's what we want to be formatted, three uh, back ticks to close it again. And within this, you can write JavaScript. And this will automatically be highlighted as JavaScript code. All right, so the next syntax that Markdown provides to us within readme files or Markdown files are hyperlinks. So if you want to add a hyperlink to a web URL or a file within your repository using a relative link, you can do that quite easily. So we're going to go ahead and say this is a hyperlink. And we want this hyperlink text to basically be uh, the hyperlink for us. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put square brackets around it. And then we're going to add the link right next to it. So let's say this is a relative link, right? So we'll say files slash test.txt is the file that we want there. Let's go ahead and create that file. So we're going to go ahead and say make their files, cd files to go into that, touch, and we said test.txt. Let's go ahead and click on that file. And let's say this is a text file. Boom, there we go. Let's close that. And now you can see if you go ahead and click on this hyperlink, it'll actually take you to that text file. You can do the exact same thing with web URLs as well. So you can go ahead and say, let's actually copy this. And let's say this is YouTube channel. And paste that link right over here. Okay, so there we go. And now if you go ahead and click on this particular link, it will take you over to our YouTube channel. Perfect. So those are hyperlinks within Markdown. So the next one that we could add are images. You can add images to your Markdown files as well. And it's very similar to adding a hyperlink, except you would add an exclamation mark in front of it. So the way that you would do it is exclamation mark, square brackets, this would be the alternate text. So in case your image is not shown, so we'll say alternate text, and then the path to an image. Once again, this could be a web URL to an image, or it could be a relative link to a file that's available within your repository. So we're going to say that there's a file named happy.jpg within our repository, it's not available right now. So you can see that's the reason why the alternate text is showing up. Let's just go ahead and grab in a image here. Beautiful. There's our image that we have. And let's go ahead and drop that into the right repository. Let's go ahead and close this and refresh that. And there you go, our image is now available within our markdown file as well. So you can as simple as that you can add images to your markdown files. So the next syntax that we have within markdown would be lists, we can have regular lists. And we can also have numbered lists as well. So the way we create regular lists is using hyphens, they so would say hyphen, item number one, hyphen, item number two, and then item number three, so on and so forth. So you get a simple list like this. You can also go ahead and have sub items using tabs. So you can indent it and then say item 1a, item 1b, so on and so forth. So there you have a simple list. Now creating a number list is as simple as that. But instead of hyphen hyphens, you would say one dot, and then say item number one, two dot, item number two, you can also create sub items within this as well. And you can have them numbered like this, or you can even hyphenate them if you don't want them to be numbered within that numbered list. So you can combine the best of both worlds. The next item that we can add to markdown files are emojis. Now emojis are supported by GitHub, they might not be supported by all platforms. So check that out before you add emojis to your markdown files. But GitHub does support it um, within um, within markdown files. So before we add that, let's go ahead and commit our entire repository. Say so git commit initial readme, and I'll say git push. 
Let's push our readme file that we just created here over to our repository. We can head on over here to GitHub. And there you go. You can see our headings, bold text, italics text. You can see code blocks. You can see syntax highlighting. You can see hyperlinks, images, and then lists, um, which we covered in today's tutorial. Uh, one more thing is you can add emojis as well. So to know what emojis to add, you can actually head on over to my Markdown cheat sheet. And we have a emoji cheat sheet within this as well, which you can kind of copy off and use this. So you can go ahead and let's say we want to use a smiley um, emoji here. So let's go back to our Markdown demo. And let's edit this readme file right over here. And we can say, we'll add the smiley over here. So let's go ahead and commit this. And you can see we can now add emojis as well to our readme files. So this is a simple way of how you can use Markdown to really format your readme files in a nice way and be very descriptive about your Git repositories. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you'd like more content like this, click the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos that I release. Thanks for watching.